Hey, welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a two by two between participants and over. So we're going to use this test when we have two independent variables and each one of those independent variables has two levels or two conditions. And when we have a continuous dependent variable, we're also going to take a look at how to check the assumptions of this test. And we'll take a look at how to report the results in APA star. So for this example, we're going to imagine that we're interested in how much food animals have eaten, let's say, within a one hour period, and we're measuring this in grams. And we're going to look at two different types of animals. So we're going to look at dogs, which are going to be represented by the number one here, and we're going to look at cats represented by the number two. And we're also going to look at males uh, and females. So males are represented by the number one here, and females are represented by the number two here. So let's go to SPSS and take a look at how we can enter this information. So if we go to variable view, I'm just gonna to go to the top cell here and I'm gonna enter animal into it. And I'm going to enter sex into this one. And then I'm gonna enter food underscore because I can't use a space there, eaten. So animal, sex and food have all been entered. And so these two A are independent variables and they're categorical. So I'm going to use this values column to specify that one equals dog and two equals cat. And I'll do the same thing for sex. So I'm going to go to the values column again. I'll take there. I'm going to say one equals male. I'm going to add, I'll say two equals female. Then I'll go to add, then to OK. And then finally, I'll go to this measures column and specify that male, uh, sorry, animal and sex, a nominal, are nominal uh, variables, also known as categorical variables, and food eaten is a scale variable. So once I've done that, I can go to data view and I can see that animal, sex, and food eaten have appeared at the top of these three columns. And now I can simply copy and paste um, the data from this Excel file into SPSS. So I'll just copy that and I'll go here and I'll paste that in. And you can see that uh, the ones and twos have been replaced by the labels that I just gave to those numbers. If you just see numbers when you do this, you can just go to view and check that value labels is ticked. Then any numbers should be replaced by the labels that you have applied to those numbers. Okay, so one of the Assumptions of the two by two between business and over is that you have normally distributed data within each combination of the independent variables. So within each combination of the groups. And one way we can check this assumption is to go to data view, or sorry, to data, then down to split file. Then I'm just going to transfer both of my independent variables into the groups based on box. And what this is going to do is just going to divide up the output that SPSS generates. So normally when you run a test, the output is based on all of the data within your file. But if you use this option, it will do tests on each um, level of your independent variables. So I've transferred those over. I'm just going to go to OK. Then I'm going to go to um, Analyze Descriptive Statistics. Then I'll go to Explore. Then I'm just going to transfer the independent variables to this factor list and I'll transfer the dependent variable to the dependent list. I've got both ticked down here. I'm just going to go to plots. I'm going to untick stem and leaf. I'm not interested in that, but I will tick, uh, tick this normality plots with tests option. Then I'll go to OK. Then I'll go to uh, continue. Then I'll go to OK. And as is often the case with SPSS, it generates loads of stuff that we probably aren't that interested in. So we're just going to focus on a very small or some very small parts of this output. So if we see here, we can see which particular group we're looking at. So we're going to see titles like this spread throughout the output. So here we can see that we're looking at dogs and we're looking at male dogs. And really the only thing I'm going to pay attention to at the moment is this one number here. So I'm looking at the tests of normality table and I'm looking at the Shapiro Wilkes section and I'm looking at the SIG column within that. So the SIG, so this is the, the SIG value or the p-value. And what we want to see is that this value is above 
0.05, which in this case indicates that the data are normally distributed. So we want that because that is one of the assumptions of, of this test. So we can see that the male dogs, um, the data for that particular group are normally distributed. I'm just going to ignore most of this. Uh, we can take a quick look at this so we can see with this, this diagram what we want to see is that there aren't any little dots outside of these bars. So in this case we can't see any dots outside of these bars and that suggests that there are no outliers. So some people say you should check for outliers when you're running this test. I think one of these groups does have outliers so I will show you an example of what it looks like when you do have outliers uh, pretty soon. Okay, so one of the confusing things about this output is that it does actually generate the same stats twice. So you can see here I've got 0 0.640 again, and that's the exact value I saw up here. Um, so we just bear in mind that you will have basically two sets of every bit of information in this output. So you can just ignore half of the output essentially. Okay, so if we keep going down, uh, we've got, now we're looking at the, the dogs, or looking at the, the female dogs instead of the male dogs this time. And so again, we've got this Shapiro Wilk stake value and that's above 0 0.05. That's what we want to see. That indicates that the data for the female dogs is normally distributed. Okay, so here is an example of, of an outlier. So we can see that uh, case number 17 um, ate less food than most of the other uh, female dogs. Um, so there are a few options to deal with outliers. Um, you could potentially remove them, although you would generally do that if you have a good reason to do it. For example, it's not really going to be applicable if we're working if we're looking at uh, data from from animals. But if if for example you had a questionnaire that you had given to people and you could see that one of those participants had just just ticked like the highest option for every possible for every question within the questionnaire that would indicate to you that that person perhaps hadn't really thought about the questions and so you might therefore have a justification for re for removing that person from the data set um, another option is to perform a data transformation we won't go into it into that uh, in this video but uh, if you look up data transformation on youtube you'll find lots of videos about that if you're interested in pursuing that option um, another option would just would be just to mention that you have outliers in your discussion of your report. So you could just say, you could just point out that you had X number of outliers and therefore the result should be interpreted with increased caution. Okay, so let's keep going down. So that's just the same, the same results again. Okay, now I've got down to the cats. So this is the male cats. And we've got a 0.873. So again, this is what we want to see. It's above 0 0.05, so the data are normally distributed. No outliers in this case. And then finally, we've got the female cats, and we've got we've got the same thing again. So this value is above 0 0.05, so it indicates that the data for the female cats are normally distributed and we don't have any outliers with this group either. Okay, so once we've done that, so we've, we've sort of looked at the assumptions of normality and of, of outliers, and we can actually check one more assumption as we run the test itself. So the other assumption is homogeneity of variance, and we can just tick a box basically when we run the test to check whether this assumption has been met. Okay, so before we uh, get to running the ANOVA itself, uh, we need to remember to switch off the uh, split file functions. We'll go to data, split file, and we'll just tick analyze all cases, do not create groups, then we'll go to OK. And then we'll go down to analyze general linear model, univariate. So it's uni because we just have one dependent variable. So I've already transferred these across. So I've transferred the dependent variable to the dependent variable box. I've transferred both of the independent variables to the fixed factors box. I've also gone to plots and I'm going to transfer animal and sex into these two different boxes here. It doesn't really matter 
which order you do that in, um, whichever makes more sense to you, then click add so that this appears here, then go to continue. And then if we go to options, we can just check. So normally these will not be checked, but I've just checked them a bit earlier. So I've checked descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests. So once you've checked those, uh, just go to continue and then you can go to OK. And so the Levine's test, it's similar to the Shapiro-Wilkes test and that we just want to see that the sig value or the p-value is above 0.05. So I'm going to focus, focus on this uh, based on mean row. And I'm just going to look at this, this value here in the SIG column, and it is 0.340. Obviously, that's above 0.05, so that indicates that this assumption has been met. So once I've checked that, I'm going to go down to the tests of between subjects effects table. And I'm going to start off by looking at this animal row. So Often the most interesting thing in these outputs is whether the p-value is above 0 0.05 or, or below 0 0.05. So if we go to the animal row and we go over to the SIG column, we can see that the value is 0 0.000. The value is actually, there is a, a number other than zero somewhere down there, but we can only see the number to three decimal places. However, we know from looking at this that the value is below 0 0.05 so that allows us to conclude that there is a significant effect of animal. So we know that there's a difference in the amount of food eaten between dogs and cats in this case. If we look at the sex row and we go to SIG, the SIG column again, we can see the same thing. The value is below 0 0.05. So we know that there is a significant main effect of sex on the dependent variable. So there's a difference between the males and females with respect to how much food they ate. So one of the things the ANOVA will tell you as well as whether there is an interaction between your independent variables. So that's represented by this asterisk between the two independent variables. Um, so an interaction is just when the relationship between one independent variable and a dependent variable is affected by variation in another independent variable. And um, in a plot, that will often look like a sort of cross um, pattern. Uh, so I'll show you what I mean. So this is kind of we don't have a cross pattern here. So this is what we're seeing here is that uh, the males ate more than the females and um, the dogs ate more than the cats. If there was an interaction, we'd likely see the, that these sort of lines cross over with each other and we'd probably see that we have a significant uh, p-value, which we don't have when we look at the, the interaction row and the, the sig column. Um, so let's take a look at how to report these results. Um, so I will often just start uh, the results section or uh, the section in which you're going to report this particular test just by saying what test you did. So I've just written that I did a 2 by 2 ANOVA to assess the effect of animal type. I specified what the different animal types were and sex. I specified what the different sex were, the sexes were on the amount of food consumed. And then I've just started off by reporting the results of those assumption checks that we performed. So Shapiro Wilk tests indicated that the data were normally distributed for each combination of groups. And so I've just written here P with an S after. So that just means all of the P's were above 0 0.05. And I've also said that Levine's test indicated that the assumption of homogeneity or variance was met. And in this case, I just because there's just one p-value, I've just reported that p-value as it appeared within SPSS. And so both of those uh, tests indicate that those assumptions were met. So once I've reported the results of those tests or the assumption checks, I can report the results of the ANOVA itself. So I'll just say something like there was a significant main effect of animal type on consumption. And then I've got, so I've got this F symbol here. And so the number that corresponds to the F symbol is this one over here. So the 19 point Sorry, then 1980.50. So I'll just take a look at where that comes from. So if we go back to this test of between subjects effects table, and we've got the animal row here, we've got the F here, and we can see that that number is represented here. The other numbers in this sentence, or this part of the sentence, are a 1 and a 36. So these represent the degrees of freedom. So we've got 
again, if we look at the animal row, and we've got the DF, so that's degrees of freedom. We've got a 1 here, and we've got a 36 within the error row of this table. So that's where those two numbers come from. Uh, next, we've got the p-value, so the p-value is less than 0 0.001, and that's because, as we saw, the, um, the sig value was represented by 0 0.000 in SPSS. Next, we have this here, so this is the partial eta squared, so I've reported that as 0.98. And if we look at the animal row again, uh, we've got 0 0.982 here. So basically, in APSR, most statistical numbers are rounded to two decimal places with the exception of p-values. So that's why I've reported this value here to two decimal places. Um, I won't go through the sex stats because that's exactly the same. So I've got, um, let me see. Uh, so we all, I've said here there was also a, a significant main effect of sex on consumption. And it's the exact same values. We've got the F value, the degrees of freedom value, the P value, and the partial, partial letter square value. So all of those values are as per the um, animal variable stats that we just looked at. I've also reported in the sentence that uh, the means for the particular um, particular groups, so we've got dogs. So the mean, the mean amount of food eaten by dogs was uh, 725.85 grams and this is the standard deviation so I'll just show you where I got that from so that comes from this descriptive statistics table and let me see so dogs so the total for dogs 725.85 and that's what I've got here so m equals that and the standard deviation for the same group so for the dogs it's just the number to the side so that's the 70.81 and that is 70.81 here then i've done the same thing for the cats so that's the mean and the standard deviation and that comes from here and i've just finally said that there was not a significant interaction between those variables and i've just got those stats as i showed you before so it's the same stats the f value the degrees of freedom the sig value and the uh, partial eta squared. Uh, so that's that's really all there is to the uh, between participants two by two ANOVA. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you. Um, thanks very much for watching.